Because it's recording. Okay, guys, this is just a quick video on making um, a casting that uh, a lot of YouTubers that are showing welding videos could use. Now, here is your standard camera base with the beveled base and then the top plate, your quarter 20 screw and a spring-loaded pin. All right, and then a recess with the thumb screw to be below the flush line. And that's your standard camera mount. But the problem being that they're jury rigging all kinds of uh, brackets and springs and clips trying to put a welding lens in front of the camera number one to protect the camera number two to filter the arc so you can watch the video uh, the the welding operation well we're going to make a replacement base that you can mount the narrow welding lens and the wide welding lens all in front of the camera very simply so what I did was I measured the base and cut some squares for the base. All right, and then I measured the top and I cut some squares for the top. And I made it wider uh, so it would stick out past normal. All right, and then I took the square uh, took the um, measured the uh, bevel here and laid it out on the on the base and then I took uh, now the first one I did I used my hot wire knife uh, hot wire mach cutting machine and I put um, a ramp and then cut it that way at the angle and it worked oh i should i should say it went like this you know the wires here and it cut it pretty good but even um and then this one i did with a real sharp knife and just laid out my laid out my triangle or triangle yeah right my square of the narrow section and then found my center hole and then took a, a sharp knife and cut the angle and then I just took and dragged it on um, some 80 grit sandpaper just to get it down to size and then to make sure that it worked I would snap it in the, the tripod base uh, snap this base into the tripod mounting bracket and once I got it all tapered and uh, sanded down to the size, it works in every position. The only two positions you need is the very front, because that's where the bevel is, and the back where that rotating cam locks it in. Those are the only two you really need. These can be left straight, because that's the, 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 uh, the guide, all right? Now, after I did that, I took the top plate and laid out the square for, for the, uh, the, uh, the top and got my center hole. Now, the center hole is relatively easy. I just took a piece of leftover uh, aluminum welding rod with a little jagged point and just pushed it through the foam. And then another thing you can do is take a, a drill rod the size you want, warm it, and I mean warm it, with a propane torch, just so it's a little bit hot to the touch, and just push it through your foam. So I got my two center holes, so these are in line. Now, if you know, uh, as I said, this is all hollowed out here, 
as you can see, I hope the light's picking it up. That's all hollowed out for the screw. So, what I did on the first one was I took um, a quarter, uh, one inch co uh, copper elbow and forced it down in there and cut myself a groove. And then I took a sharp knife and, and cut around to and then pulled out the, the material. And then I had to smooth it out because it's so jagged. So then I took and heated up a, a rod, a shaft, whatever you want to call it. I got it toasty warm. And then I just pushed down and smoothed it out. Now on this one, I did, I, I used this to give me a line and then I just heated this up a little warmer so that it would start to melt and really soften the, the foam down and I just pressed it down to the thickness I wanted. Now I've got probably a strong 3 3 seconds. I don't think I got 3 16 there but it, it it's about that thick. The other one I did it's, uh, it had an eighth of an inch, which is all right because you're casting it in aluminum, so it's not going uh, going anywhere. It's not plastic. It's it's steel. Now, hang on a second while I plug in the hot gun, so I can show you this operation. So what we're going to do is. We're going to hot glue this thing. I'm getting my thoughts straight. When this thing gets hot enough, we're going to hot glue this to this using the bolt as a centering. And then we're going to glue this to the outside here. But up now this this is a this is a roughly a half by five eighths all right and we're going to glue that like that so it sticks up and we're going to have about an inch coming out each way now why are we going to make it that much longer because some cameras mount on one side and other cameras mount on the other side and some mount right in the center. Some have the, the flip open um, monitor, all right? Well, if you mount the camera and it's got the flip open monitor coming out this way, it might hit this. So if you turn it around, now the monitor the camera's pointing this way, the monitor's out here, and the lens will be held this from this side. So it's a dual way of mounting it. Come on, hot gun. Get going. Still taking a little time to warm up. Um, what else can I tell you while that thing's warming up? Um, sanding it, mounting it. Oh, okay. Now, this is going to be drilled with a quarter inch hole all the way through the center. I'm going to come right in through the center all the way through with a quarter inch drill. And then I'm going to put at least three screw, uh, 1032 screw holes in the side. And I'm going to use thumb screws, 1032 thumb screws to hold a quarter inch drill rod. Now I'm going to have a quarter inch drill rod go in the air and then come out and then bend up 90 degrees. And then on, on that drill rod, I'm going to make arms that stick out that actually hold the lens. Now those arms will be in the next video. I'm not, I'm just doing the base now, and then I will make, uh, get the foam ready, and then I'll make the arms to show you how to do that. So, is that glue gun heating up yet? Yeah, it's starting. Okay, 
So, now this is going to be the bottom, and that's where I want it. So, we're going to have to do it like that. Yeah, dummy, just turn it over. Okay, now, I want it one inch. That's pretty darn close. And I hate blocking your view, but what I'm doing is just gluing this one in place. And the benefit of doing lost foam is you don't have to worry about having um, a relief, a taper. Let that sit there. If this was done in green sand, every square side would have to have a two to three degree relief. <coughs> Not only um, to get your mold out of the green sand, but also to prevent any any um, failures or flaws when you're pouring the casting. Now, lost foam doesn't have that problem, so it's very forgiving in that respect. One thing about hot glue, it takes forever to cool down. Oh, strings. Let's see if I can turn that over without goofing things up here. Come on, stay there. I'm putting a heavier bead on here. Because this is the underneath portion. Like I said, this is the underneath portion, so it doesn't matter how much you build that up. Oop. Hold steady, hold steady. Okay. Now that's got to set up a little bit before I can put the other two together. Because I know if I move it, it's going to go uh, all over the place. And, lose its position. I want to try and keep it as straight as square as possible. Doesn't really matter, it's going to hold a round uh, rod that can be adjusted. Come on, cool down baby. Let's see, if I do, I can put it there. Now that's too high. Still pretty good. Can I put it? Nope, that's still too high. How about this? Oh, see, I sanded that down. This is rough. That's better. That'll work. Okay. So now we want to take and put some glue. Get my hand out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. You gotta watch it. You can see that hot glue is hot. Put the bolt in. Put the bolt in. Come on. Go down.
bolt is all the way in and we're looking pretty square and I'm just I'm pressing on the bolt press that base down on the center and then I'm pressing with the back of my fingers on here and I want to check the she shifted just a little bit on me ah I just stuck my thumb right in the hot glue I'll fix that later <laughs> I put my thumb right in there but uh, we're pretty good now that's gonna here cool down and basically we're all set there is your mold all right now um, when I when I'm gonna put the spew on I don't want it this way because I don't want that on the bottom I'm gonna turn it over and glue the screw uh, spew on to this part so that the uh, aluminum is gonna come in fill out here come across and fill up now if I if I feel that I need a, a little a couple of risers I'll hot glue on some uh, straws on that corner and that corner so that the aluminum can come in flow out and then come up the straws for a couple of risers you don't need much because there's not that much mass all right so I think that I think that might have shifted on me a little bit. Oh, um, if you should melt this down too far and uh, it's too thin for you, just take some Elmer's glue and flow it in there, smooth it out, let it find its own level, and then when that hardens, uh, you'll have a nice thicker layer and if it ain't thick enough add some more glue and let it harden so I think I think we're all set I think I got a complete unit right there ready to be cast there she be all right so now once it's cast cut the spew off and um, then I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna bore a hole all the way through, and then I'll put at least three um, uh, 1032 thumb screws in there to hold the rod, and then I'll stick the rod in so that it just flush with the back, come out here and bend up 90 degrees. And then I'm not sure if it's going to be six inches tall. I think six inches. So that it's tall enough to hold the two arms and the big lens. And of course, if it's a small lens, you can shrink it down. And the, these arms will be adjustable. So I'll show you that in the, in the next video. But there is the rough cast uh, mold for casting a base, camera base to hold a welding lens in front of the camera. Stay tuned guys, the arms are next. Thanks, bye bye.